Madame, what is it? Before you go home, you're to see Monsieur Maid's waiting for you. Terrible, disgraceful. Only a mental backwardness could excuse you. Yet I know you to be intelligent, you wretched boy. What have you to say? Sorry, Monsieur. Sorry. You have news. News? Ah, what news, Madame? What news indeed? Thanks to that idiot. Let me tell you, jam. We were making jam. Cooking it on the stove, as usual, it boils over. Nothing unusual in that, but madame needs another bowl. I ask him to get one, and where do you think he goes? Let me show you, madame. He goes out here, too lazy to look properly. He takes this key, this key of all keys, and he goes to this cupboard of all cupboards, the poison cupboard. He takes from it a bowl, and in it we make jam. Wash it you it's washed it. You have something to tell, to tell you, madame, to tell everyone. You know what there was to that jar? There was a bottle containing a white powder. That white powder was arsenic. It might have poisoned us all. Yes, all. Everyone. Natalie, Napoleon, Rodrigue, madame, and myself might be writhing in agony at this very instant. And all because of you, you idle, stupid, wretched boy. What's that book? Uh, it's nothing, monsieur. It's just one of my... I, I was told to come here. Conjugal love? With pictures? So this is how you spend your time? Can we see the pictures? Please? Certainly not. Leave the room. Immediately. Quickly. Have you any idea what might have happened should this book have fallen into the hands of my children? How it might have besmirched the purity of your Natalie? Corrupted Napoleon's innocence? Have you any idea? No, not you, not for a moment. Have you something to say to me, monsieur? Uh, madame, uh, why, yes, of course. Uh, your father-in-law is dead. The chair, Justin, for madame. No. Father-in-law? Yes, apoplexy. Quite suddenly, as he was leaving an old comrade's reunion dinner. Your husband asked me to break the news to you. Oh, where is he? Oh, he's at home, overcome with grief. Thank you. Poor dear lady, so devoted to her husband. <laughs> A better example of conjugal love than you will ever find in there. Oh, Emma, Emma, my poor father. Yes, yes, Monsieur Homme told me. You must be brave. Hmm? We must both be brave. I could have. Just to see them again. How old was he? Fifty eight. Will you dine now, madame? Uh, yes, Felicity, we will dine. You've made a journey. You must be hungry. Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, I did. My mother, what happened to her? It's a pity. I bought them from a lady selling them in the street. So I have plenty more, thank you. Well, I don't know what clothes I have. We must, we must buy some clothes. Your mother will come and stay here? After the funeral. The view funeral. That was a bad, bad stunt. Oh, Charles. Um, Emma, you're, you're so good to me. Look, you go upstairs. Oh, I can't, I can't. Come along. Things to be done. Leave everything to me. This, you go up to This is the will. And my mother look, and you don't just look everything. You're going to be just, ill. Emma, Emma, you're so good to me.
Madame. I was about to call on you. Now, please. May I offer you my condolences on your bereavement and my respectful congratulations to your husband as now being the head of his family. I imagine you want two day dresses. Yes. If I may say so, black suits you. At his convenience, I would like to call on him to discuss a small matter. Your trunks and the traveling cloak. Oh, we still owe you for this? We came to an arrangement satisfactory to both sides. A bill falls due on September the 1st. How much? For 1,060 francs, including interest at 6%. Not that I'm worried. Oh, no. I'm quite prepared to continue the accommodation, or even, if you wished, to increase it. After all, your husband is his father's sole heir. I could borrow more money from you? On your husband's signature, of course. Poor fellow, I suppose he's much too distressed to bother about such things. Besides, he has to carry on with his work. It's really a duty to help him as much as possible to take the load off his shoulders. It's so very simply done. Why, you yourself, madame, could do it. I could? A very simple document to give you power of attorney. You should talk about it to my lawyer, Maitre Guillemin. You could sign everything, and your husband would have no more worries. I'm sitting in your chair. Oh, I don't mind where I sit. I can work just as well in my room. <laughs> you don't have the to last thing that I want is to be in anyone's way. <laughs> I didn't even want to sit down. Oh, we'll buy another chair. As soon as I've worked out how much money we have. Oh, Charles, my dearest, that'll never be. You don't understand these things. No, I don't. <laughs> Why don't you leave them to me? I wish I could. You I... can. Hmm? I've been saying that to the dear one. And you only have to sign this in front of two witnesses, pay a five-franc stamp fee, and I can handle everything for you. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> but you don't know anything about the law either, so I don't just... <sighs> That's true. And I don't trust Metro Leoman too far either. You know, these lawyers have such a bad reputation. If only there was someone we could consult, but there's nobody. Um, uh, yes, there is. There is someone. There's, um, there's Leon. There's Leon Dupuis. Oh, I don't think we could ask him. Why not? He's particularly fond of you, you know, Emma. You know, I think he'd do anything you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would mean making a trip to Rouen. Well, of course, that's just completely out of the question. Just, well, just I don't mind. I'll go. No, 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 I wouldn't. No, 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 Charles. No, no, I, I wouldn't insist hear of it. Charles. You are good. Mm. Now, he works during the day, so I'll have to see him in the evening. Yes. Well, uh, you would have to stay the night. In any case, you'd better stay two nights, because well, you mustn't tire yourself. Breakfast. Lunch, I think. <laughs> oh, what a day is it? Sunday. Oh, one more night. Mm. There never was a woman like you. 
I nearly died when you left. And I? Yeah, one night, I actually wrote my will. I was to be buried in the rug. A beautiful rug you gave me? <laughs> you still have the cactus? Mm. Just this winter. The frost took it. Oh, what matter? There'll be other rugs. Other cacti. But only one for you. Mmm, <laughs> why your glass? I don't <laughs> mind anything. <laughs> Oh, I'm absolutely and perfectly happy. Here. Eat some more. <laughs> you mustn't starve. Mm. Well, I suppose sometime you ought to look at those documents, hmm? Well, it'll look odd if I go back and say that in three whole days you didn't even have time to look at the documents. <laughs> it'll be true. Whereas I, Charles Bovary of Yonville la Bay, being infirm of mind and body, and quite unable to cope with the gorgeous creature I have married, to wit Emma Bovary, must hereinafter be known as a cuckold. And whereas it is contrary to the laws of nature and the customs of this country for the aforementioned gorgeous creature to be less than blissfully happy, I hereby empower Leon Dupuis, hereinafter known as the lover, to attend to any matters in which the aforementioned gorgeous creature may consider me incompetent. Oh, we could only get him to sign that. <laughs> you could get anyone to do anything. Could I? Oh, almost anything. Mm. Oh, I'll have to think of a reason to come here at least once a week. Find seven reasons and come here every day. Solution of this in half a liter of water. Keep your crusts of bread in it, and when they're dry, place them near the rat holes. But I wouldn't advise it advise you to keep it anywhere near that miraculous wine of yours. Hmm. One teaspoon of that taken internally, and you'd need a real miracle to survive. There's no call for blasphemy. Huh. You know what Monsieur de Voltaire thought about your doctrines? Monsieur de Voltaire died in agony. Hmm. That proved nothing. Screaming for mercy. To science, not to heaven. And could science help him? No. Who's playing? Madame Bovary. She's taking it up again. She used to play quite wonderfully. Now she seems out of practice. Oh, it's frightful. I'm all... Um, no, 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 you, <sighs> just have patience. Well, if I can't play any better than that, I might just as well sell the piano. Oh, no, but you're out of practice, that's all. Perhaps a few lessons and <laughs> you'd be... What, are 20 francs a time? That's rather expensive. Yeah. <sighs> Although, now I come to think of it, Madame Nezia did tell me that her two girls are having lessons in Rouen at two and a half francs a time. Oh, well, then, that's good, well. You wouldn't mind? No, no. No, it's a crime to let our natural faculties lie fallow, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charles. Uh -huh. He's laughing at us. I know. He is the god of love. Mm. Only child. The god of love? He marks the time. Just think of it. Seven whole days until next Thursday. Mm. No, I don't think about it, I don't. Between now and then, there's nothing. Just the beautiful German home. And the horrible German home again. You must be devoted to music, madame, to make this journey every week. You make it just as often? For business, not for art. You must come and play for me sometime, madame. You claim perhaps a convert. Oh, you don't like playing, then? 
games in general, I'm very much in favor. Built, however, as I am, I find the keyboard somewhat constricting. How is Monsieur Dupuis? I saw you with him this afternoon. You were coming out of the Hotel de Boulogne, I think it was. Yes, it, it may have been. I ran into him somewhere near there. Ah. Yonville, I think. care to come to my shop to see some of the material I brought there. Tomorrow morning, perhaps. It would be more convenient for both of us if you could come now. The money, madame. Money? I need it soon. Soon, yes, of course, you shall have it soon. Don't imagine you won't be paid. As soon as the will is proved, I shall give you your money. I shall see to it myself. After all, you know, I have control of everything. I know. Sinful extravagance. I don't care what anyone says. I think it's disgraceful. It's a new carpet. A new chair cover. And don't ask me whose money's paying for it. I know. I have eyes in my head. I can see what's going on. You do well to look guilty, my girl. All my married life, I kept my husband free from extravagance. And now that he is dead, what do I see? Even before the will is proved, I see money poured out like water, simply because my son is too feeble and indecisive to look after his own affairs. Well, not anymore, I can tell you. I have spoken to him, and he has undertaken to revoke that ridiculous power of attorney that he was fool enough to give you. Has he? Has he, indeed? Charles! If he doesn't trust his own wife, if he'd rather listen to others, to malicious gossip, than to the woman to whom he's married, I have nothing to say. You've no need to revoke your power of attorney. I shall oh. do it for you. Oh, oh, there. Emma. There. Emma. There. Emma. Now I hope you're happy. Emma. <laughs> and then I had a complete fit of hysterics. Oh, you should have heard me. <laughs> Did I not? Oh. Stupid old woman. I've never been so insulted in all my life. Anyway, I soon put her in her place, and then she went home in a huff. And Charles, Charles went down on his knees to beg me to allow him to draw up another document. <laughs> <laughs> so you still have power of attorney? Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look in my bag. You should hang your things up. No time. Go on, go on, open it, open it. There's something for you. For me? Who else? You shouldn't. Oh, I should. Oh, yes, yes, I should. Well, aren't you going to thank me? In a moment, my darling. In a moment. Oh, what is it? Oh, my love, what is it? Nothing. Yes, yes, there was something. I, 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 I saw you sigh as though you were unhappy. Oh, my child, you see, I know you. We can't keep these things from each well, other. How could I be unhappy no, here with same, you? I know there was something. Oh, tell me. Mm, tell Emma. Is it me? Not. Are you beginning to tire no, of me, no, to fall no, out of love no. with me? Because if you were, I think I should die. Oh, no. oh, don't do that. <laughs> oh, all the time I wonder, does he love me still? Hmm? <laughs> At home, when I'm out shopping, sitting opposite Charles at dinner. Oh, how I hate those dinners. There he sits, sucking in his soup. Oh, I wish it would <laughs> choke him, poison him. <laughs> it could, you know. 
poisonous? Monsieur Ome has a cupboard full of poison. I could get some arsenic and make mushroom soup and nobody would know. Emma, <laughs> what? <laughs> Will I be a dream? <laughs> a fancy? Imagining how it would be if it was all perfect. Never can be perfect. Oh, yes, it can be now. Perfect. Yeah. And now. Oh, Madame is coming now. Yes. Madame Emma Bovary? Yes. On behalf of Monsieur Vinsard, Rouen. Uh, what is it? Your note of hand, Madame, for 1,700 francs. Oh, but that's absurd. I, I, I don't even know Monsieur Vinsard. That is your signature, Madame. Uh, yes, it is. Well, there must be some mistake. I shall see to it. A copy, Madame. We keep the original. But I don't understand. I gave this note to Monsieur Lerreux. And I sold your debts to Monsieur Vincent. He runs a finance house in Rouen. Well, I can't afford to carry the burden myself. Well, shall I go and see him, this Monsieur Vincent? Monsieur Vincent? I don't think that would help, madame. He's not very susceptible. Then what shall I do? Pay him. I can't. The will was worthless, you know that. What will happen? He'll obtain a court order and your house and your goods will be seized. That can't happen. It happens every day. Felicite. Just one, monsieur, madame. Ah, just un peu, madame. I want you to deliver these two letters. Monsieur Tuvache and Monsieur Dumais. Deliver them now? Yes, it's not too late. And if they wish to pay you, you bring the money back here. Pay me, madame? These are bills for the doctor's services. I, I'm helping him to collect them. If they give you the money, you bring it back to me. Hmm? Oh, and uh, here. Oh, no, no, I could not Please. take money from you, Ma madame. I, I wish I had money to give you. I, you ought to be rich. Go quickly, Justin. You're very thoughtful. It's stuffy in here. It always is. It smells of other people. Uh, I don't suppose they keep it exclusively for us. Is that worth money? Mm -hmm. Everything's worth money. Lame. Would you do something for me? Anything. What? Sell these. Gold? No, silver gilt, but they're good. They were a wedding present. Surely you don't need to sell them. Yes, I do. Present. Now, Leon, please don't argue. Just say that you'll do it, and then we can forget. Now I've forgotten about it. Now I've forgotten about everything except that I'm here with you. <laughs> ah, you tore off three buttons the first time you did this. Remember? I'm used to it now. <laughs> and the maid was funny about it. When I asked her to sew them on, she said she could always judge people's love by the amount of buttons she had to sew on, and three-button love was the best. <laughs> Yes, I remember you told me. Oh, shutters, too. Yes, let's shut out the day. <laughs> oh, I hate the day. It's so cold and clear. Oh, I wish it was always night. Sometimes when I wake up and... See the light through the shutters and hear the noise in the streets, I think. 
Why don't I just turn over and go back to sleep until the light's gone? <laughs> and then when they'd light the lamps, I'd dress and go downstairs. And outside it would all be quiet. There wouldn't be an outside world at all. <laughs> there isn't now. It's gone. Vanished in the fog. There's only us in this room. <laughs> no past. No present. No people. an age you're taking and so tidy as bad as Charles well nearly not as good thank God or you wouldn't be here and neither would I if Charles wasn't so damn good so forgiving understanding sad gentle and kind I will not be forgiven I won't be understood oh, Leon for God's sake hurry up I'm all alone What's this? A judgment. I paid. Not enough. Good morning, madame. Oh, keep him out, madame. He said he was the law. What does he want? He wants 3,000 francs. In 24 hours, or they'll come and take everything away. Yes. They know I can't do it. It's a joke. 3,000 francs in a day. A day? They can't mean it. Nobody could. It's L'Horreur trying to frighten me. <laughs> I'll go and see him now. Really, madame? There's nothing I can do. And even if I could, I doubt that I'd feel inclined. I can't go on borrowing forever, you know. <laughs> I haven't worked like a black all these years simply to help you pay for your pleasures. Oh, I'll sign anything. <laughs> your signature is worth nothing. One lamp brass with glass shade, item number 76. M my husband will be back at any moment, would you Almost mind? through, madame. One pen tray brass, item number 77. What's this? Uh, what is this? Oh, uh, uh, a medical head for students. A professional instrument, don't mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you, madame. That is all. Oh, you're going? I go. He stays. Good day. I need 3,000 francs. Well, I... I must have it. Today, now. Have you tried to borrow it? <laughs> of course I have. I've been to every banker in town. They laugh at me. There's no one left but you. I, I couldn't find 300. I, I would if I could, Emma. You, you know can. that. A thousand, perhaps, if I no, borrow from friends. No, three. There must be a safe in your office. Steal it. Oh, yes. Well, don't you understand? They'll leave us nothing. We'll be finished. We'll be out in the street. Beggars. Sleeping in the market. I right? couldn't steal. Why not? Just look around this great city. Money everywhere. In the shops on the quays. Why, there are houses here so rich that one carpet would save me. But would they sell? No. So why should I care where the money comes from? I see your point, but all the same... I'd have done it for you. I'd do anything for you. Why won't you do this for me? There must be a better way. You think of it. Morel. Who's he? A friend of mine, son of a cotton broker, fabulously rich. He's been away in Paris, but he must be back by now. Now, why didn't I think of him before? Well, where does he live? Rue de Beauvoisin. Oh, around the corner. Oh, the far end of it. It's oh, quite I, a distance. I'll come with you. And no, I'll no, come with wait son. here for me. Oh. Well, how long will you be? An hour. Oh, no, not now, Leon. I can't wait for you an hour. Oh, as soon as I can. Mm. I'll be waiting for you. 
The coach leaves when? Half past five. And I must be on it. Yes, yes, of course. If you want some money now, Oh, no, I no, 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 no. I, I don't want any money now. <laughs> what I'll do is I shall lie here and wait for you. Yes, yes, oh. yes. I'll see you. Nothing is more delightful than to discover an acquaintance on the coach, particularly after being in a busy town like Rouen. Though I did see one familiar face today, young Léon Dupuis. When? About an hour before the coach left. We took a cup of coffee together. He seemed cheerful. Oh, they shouldn't have done it. Out there for everybody to see. Justin tore it down. They've taken him away. God. Has my husband seen this? Well, everybody has. What did he say? Well, he didn't say anything. He, he's just sitting downstairs in the surgery, weeping and asking for you. Who put this up? Major Guillermo's clerk. Madame, what are you going to do? I'm going to see Maître Guillaume. You should have come before. If you only wish that you had put your affairs to me, I could have invested that money of yours to bring in 20%. But now? What about now? I've always admired you, madame. Ever since the day you first came to the town. But the money? What about the money? I am most interested in it. I hope you don't doubt it. The money. Yes, all right. You shall have it. What a reserve. I am sorry, darling. I don't know. Felix, it's No, 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 please. Don't go now. No. Oh, please stay with me. Oh, no. I love you. Yes, I've seen no. you. What you want walking. I've seen you in the street. You take advantage no. of my distress, monsieur. Stay with me. Here. Please. I am to be pitied. Not bought. Come home, my darling. I have no home. Don't talk like that. Today may look black, but tomorrow oh, things... tomorrow will be too late. I must do something now. Someone. Somewhere. There must be some help. Monsieur Rodolphe? Yes. He came home last week. He's here? Now? I suppose so, yes. Beautiful enough for you. Far, far more beautiful than I ever deserved. I can't ask you to forgive me. What I did was unforgivable, but I had to do it. There were other people involved. It hurt its time. Yes, I know. That's life. And how has life treated you since? Oh, I've existed. No more than that? Not really. Nor me. Oh, we were so happy. And I loved you so much. I was very ill. I almost died. Yes, they told me. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, Rodolphe, I loved you then, and I love you still. Oh, I don't mind what you did. I don't mind anything. Women, I mean, just so long as we can start again. Oh, can we? Oh, say we can, we can. Oh, I'm happier than I've ever been. <laughs> God, I was a fool. You're the only one, Emma. I loved you then, and I love you still. And please. Please, Emma. Don't cry. Don't cry. What is it? Tell me. I'm ruined. to lend me 3,000 francs. I haven't got it, dear lady. You haven't got it? You haven't got it? have spared myself this last humiliation. But this great house you have, your servants, your dogs. Oh, I am sorry for you. Your horses, brandy, clothes. Why, look at these. Even these are gold. I don't want them. I'd have begged, borrowed, stolen, all for a smile. Just to hear you say, thank you. Why did you do it? Why? Did someone make a bet? Or was it just for sport? Those words of love here in this room. And I believed them, I did, I, I really did. The plans we made. Venice. on that letter. It broke my heart. And now when I ask you for the one thing that you do possess, the only thing you'll ever be able to give a woman, money. Even that you refuse me. Very well. I've looked at before. Well. Rest, monsieur. I'll bring you a tray. No. Oh, you must eat this. No. When madame comes home again, then I'll eat.
European nations were famous both as foreign justice and as violence. They became at times people from other proletarian nations. And for the following reason. They were at one time subject to the Easterns of Austria and Germany. Where have you been? Darling, no, Emma. No questions now. But Emma, where, what, are what are we going to do? What are we going to There's not so much in dying. I shall go to sleep. And it will all be over. You uh, must try to remember what you eat. Why does it taste of ink? Ink. Emma. Emma. Emma, you for God's sake, Emma. You must tell me. You, uh, m you must tell me what you've eaten. You must. For God's sake. All right. Let's With your permission, Doctor, I propose to introduce a tube into the throat in order to make an analysis. Oh! Doctor. Oh! It's. It's arsenic! She's taken arsenic! Please. Oh, how? Keep calm. Oh, help you me. You must oh, keep no. calm. Please, it's 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 please keep calm. She's calm. You, you must keep calm. Emma. Please. Oh, Emma. Good man.
Monet Partridge, Bob Dilly, Dave McKenzie. I have a great respect for the deaf, but no respect at all for prayer. After all, if God knows everything, what is the point of praying to him? It is fundamental to Christianity. Yes, but look here. Either she died in a state of grace, as you called it, in which case she has no need of our prayers, or she died impenitent, and nothing we say can help her. Do you discount the scriptures? They've been perverted by the Jesuits. Read Voltaire. You read St. Thomas, or Montesquieu, or Diderot, or the Greeks. Then you know what life is really like. 